Good morning, lovely people. How are you all today? Wow, it's so bright today. So I'm on my way to the garden, but this is my first visit since Storm Kiara. <laughs> oh, it's so bright, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's my first visit since the storm. So I thought before I go into my garden, I just want to come into the local park because in one of my local Facebook groups, someone had posted an image of one of the trees. So I thought, well, I want to come down and see how my adopted pear tree is doing and all the other community <clears throat> orchard trees. I'm hoping, let's walk and talk now. I'm hoping that <clears throat> there's no damage in my garden. Obviously I hope that. I think probably not because I'm, I'm pretty sure that if there had been much damage, Oh yeah, here comes the tree. Yeah, I think if there'd been any damage to my plot, someone would have messaged me because so many of the plot holders, they live in the houses surrounding the plots so they can see. And I have had no such message. So fingers crossed when I get there, it's all okay. I'm just gonna swing you round now because I'm surprised actually that this tree has come down. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Around. Yeah, sorry, we're into a very bright light. It's a big tree, big tree. One of the reasons I'm surprised that it's come down is because it's it was up against this building, and I would have thought the building would have, I don't know, buffered some of the wind. But my goodness, that is that is a big big tree to come down. I think we have to be careful at times like this about using words like devastation and destruction because well obviously this is some destruction but in terms of devastation you know devastation is a word that we should reserve for things like Hurricane Katrina or what happened in Haiti. Oh, it is sad to lose a tree though, isn't it? It's sad to lose a tree and look at this beautiful bright day. Right, I'm going to go right over to the other side of the park and see how my little pear tree got on. Hoorah! Still standing, as they all are. There's the apple tree. I didn't really expect these little ones to be damaged because they're Still, I mean, there, there's no sort of top canopy to them and they're pre fairly little skinny trees at the moment. So I would have thought that they could sort of bend and flex with the wind. Obviously, they're also very firmly staked as well. But yay, delighted. I have in that walk around seen another couple of smaller trees down, but they look like they were to us they looked like they were dead anyway so I don't know if they were sort of diseased or quite what but there we go yay not too much damage in the park so now I'm going to head to the garden and hope for the best just before I leave the park I'm right at the top end of the park now furthest away from the plot this is one of our little community planting areas and look Oh, I'm so happy to see these. These are the first daffs that I'm seeing out this year. Oh, sweet wee things. So all these bulbs in here, there's loads coming up, there's tulips around the corner. This is all um, community planting. So the park is owned by the council. Oh, look, loads, loads of bulbs coming up. Oh, and more daffs over there. And look, pretty, pretty, pretty. Yeah, the council own this, but they let us look after it. They let us plant and tend. Fantastic. Oh, that's made my morning. Yay! Right, now I'm going to go to the garden. I will get to the garden shortly, but I just saw, because I haven't been around this end of the park for ages, not all winter, we've got some new wall art. Isn't that fantastic? So this on the left here, this is our bowling green. 
and this is the bowling club hut. I love it. Look, Robin, blue tit. And this here, this is obviously a representation of one of the masts at Crystal Palace and uh, some of the old buildings there that's whatever's left. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I've just spotted the little bee too. Well, isn't that a cheerful sight on this beautiful morning? Look at that sky. You would never know that over the last few days it's been black up there and battering us with a right old hooli. Right now, I really am going to go to the garden to see if Kiara mocked around in there at all. Oh, home sweet home. <laughs> I shall say a proper good morning to you all now. It is still quite blustery, so I think that's going to play silly what's it's with the sound today. Hmm. Not much I can do about that, is there really? Anyway, yes, here, ready to start work. So I've just walked in the garden. Um, actually met a, follow, a, follow, a fellow plot holder uh, as he was coming in. Mark, as in Eminem. I've shown you their plot a few times. And I was asking if he'd been down here since Kiara. What day is it today? I can't remember whether it's Wednesday or Thursday and the storm was on Saturday night into Sunday morning, all day Sunday, and then we had some extra blusts on Monday and Tuesday. Anyway, have you been down since the storm? Yes, <laughs> any damage. So their compost bins had gone flying despite having big chunks of wood inside them and a load of their cardboard has, has blown away but what they can't understand is there were tons of bricks on them and the bricks seem to have gone too. So I was expecting, oh bye Rusty, I was expecting similar with my plot. There's a couple of areas where the cardboard has, it's obviously flapped up and been torn off and that's gone but really tiny bits. The the net i tell you what let me show you <laughs> why don't i show you rather than tell you this net tunnel i put on partly to protect the soil from pelting rain but also because i put a load of leaves on it what's amazing is that was off but it was really twisted and snarled up and i'm amazed that the wind was able to lift it because it was it was really heavily staked into the soil so put that back like I say, little little patches of cardboard have disappeared. I mean, really, really nothing to worry about. Oh, the mound of leaves I had over there, ready to strim and spread. <laughs> They've gone, obviously. But otherwise, ah, oh, now this is curious. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me, catching my throat. Um, yeah, another bit of cardboard disappeared. What's amazing... Oh, I'll come to the amazing in a minute. My obelisk, that was halfway down. Compost thin lids, still in place. But, you see where Rusty is? I don't know if you can see it. There's the metal mesh that was on the top of the cold frame. The other one's just there at the moment. I fished that out from, it was in with the garlic. It kind of amazed me that they lifted off because they're full of holes. You'd think the wind would just pass straight through them, but no it uh, lifted them and then the only other bit of damage is the Taunton Dean which I did think may be an issue it's gonna be hard to show you hey buddy are you having a little sun bath oh yes so it is really quite top heavy let me see if I can come from the other direction it might be easier to show you yeah can you make that out so there's one two of the big side stems they've been snapped off and oh it's quite hard to show this over here you see the bee houses are now just visible that the, there's a big stem it goes down there that's also snapped off so I should be harvesting that today um yeah I'm just trying to show you this in here you see that, that big stem, it goes down there and it's just sort of sheared off. Oh, it looks like that one has two at the bottom. 
not to worry you know there's a lot of plant there and it's still looking perfectly healthy and happy but it does tell me that I need to get it tied up to that fence a bit but yeah well, that's going to be a lot of kale to take home and scoff oh oh I just had a thought though because I've got visitors in the next couple of days I think they are going to have a kale pie yay right what's on the agenda today right the agenda for today so there are two main jobs that I want to do today oh actually there are three jobs the third one is quite a lengthy one so I'll put that in a separate video my two jobs today top dress my garlic with a feed and re-sow broad beans this will be my third sowing I've just had a quick look under the nets and if you remember at the beginning of February for the tour I showed you a, a couple had poked up yay there's about I think there's about maybe 10 of that second sowing that have come up brilliant so I've got my broad bean seed I had taken it home because I thought I I thought I would need to sow them at home I may still do that I'll explain why in a sec I'm going to do an experiment here to see if I can sow them and keep the mises off I'm going to do them in pots though because I think it will be easier with my mouse prevention which I'll show you in a second it will be easier to contain it if I do them in pots I now do not know whether these are the aquadulci, aquadulci claudia or the super aquadulci last year when was it? it must have been about July 2019 I had set aside a few plants that I wanted to save seed from and they were the super aquadulci they gave me the beautiful long 10 inch pods I've sown so many times now I think these are now mixed up with just regular aquadulci I didn't think I had enough because I'd got my seeds in two separate places mm, before I got organised so I've bought some this is the regular aquadulci uh, these came from the seed cooperative lovely great paper packet that'll go in the compost heap later on so I'm going to do my experiment in pots now with these I could do one of two things I could either do them at home or do them direct and carry on this experiment direct out in the garden so it will involve <laughs> look at this let me find the opening for you it's tool in gorgeous I'm a Barbie girl pink <laughs> this was gifted to me by Gabby thank you so much Gabby um, <laughs> you're so funny doing it in pink <laughs> I'm so not a pink girl but actually when it's unfolded as you can see it's considerably less bright but actually every time I look at it I laugh and so yeah why not why not go bright pink so this is quite wide stuff I think this is what I'm going to use with the pots and then she also sent to me some narrower length of it but look <laughs> it looks like a loo roll oh my goodness don't wipe your bum with this it's way scratchy so I think without hello little Rosie without further ado let's get planting these beans I'm going to hold on to these for now because I can't I can't decide whether I want to risk another sowing outdoors if there's still mice around oh one of my plot friends told me the other day he saw um he saw a fox in the middle of my plot pounce on and get a mouse so the foxes and the cats they're all mousing I just think because we've had such a mild winter I think they've probably been the mice have been carrying on reproducing all winter instead of hibernating anyway so I'll have a think on that but let's get these into some pots and see how we're gonna do this tool bog roll mouse prevention I can't get over how 
delightfully bright it is today. Oh, I forgot to mention when we were in the shed, it's my little Mohican duck spud. One of the things I was also concerned about coming back today is that I think, I think it's been a week since I've been in the garden and I just haven't been able to get back for one reason or another. And there were two nights when I think we were down to frost. I think it was two nights. I don't know quite how cold it got, but it was a case of in the morning seeing sparkly frost on the roof tiles. So of course my concern was that all these spuds that I had out in the shed chitting would be damaged because ideally, <clears throat> if there's a frost warning like that, I would have got back to the shed thrown fleece over them but I didn't and I thought oh they're all going to be mush and I'm going to have to start again buy a whole new lot but they look okay so phew <laughs> I'll be paying closer attention from now on okay so let's just get the last of these broad beans in the pots I think I've got enough to do 35 basically that's all the compost I've got at the moment it feels really peculiar doing these in pots because normally I would direct sow them. It's also a bit frustrating because obviously I'm using up a load of compost to do it and pots and trays which I'm sure I will need in a few weeks, less than a few weeks. So yeah, a bit frustrating but of course this compost that they're in it's going to end up in the garden so yeah that's all right. I'm shoving them in, ooh, about twice as deep as the seed itself is deep. Some of the pots are a little bit on the small side, but what I'm thinking, hoping, <laughs> is that in the cold frame, so these are gonna go in the cold frame, that just that little bit of extra warmth protection in there will really get them going. Hopefully they'll get going quickly. So in terms of the pot size, I'm not too concerned because literally all I want to do in a way is get the little plants up so that the mice don't get the seeds. So I'm just looking at making little plug plants with these really. They're not going to stay in the pots a long time. They're not going to stay in long enough to get root bound, anything like that. They're not going to enjoy having their roots disturbed. So the minute I see any roots at the bottom, that'll be my cue and also depending on the size of the top growth that will be my cue to get them out of here and into the garden and hopefully still have well I'm not going to get an early harvest <clears throat> I haven't done a spring sowing of broad beans for years so I can't remember when to expect a harvest and this just goes to show when I was doing my planning video back at the beginning of January and I've got my sheets of paper with my different beds on and planning what's going where and what will follow that thing and da -da. <clears throat> this is what I mean about being flexible you have to be flexible because no matter how great a plan you come up with something is bound to come along to scupper it so normally I would follow the broad beans with the cocoa de pampol I don't know that that bed is going to be empty of broad beans in time so I'm thinking about the bed behind it. Right, let's get on with this tool. So what I'm thinking <laughs> is <clears throat> I want enough to go over it and under it. I want to be able to basically encase it completely so that the mice can't lift a corner of it and get under via a corner. So let's have a go at this. It down here. This feels so peculiar to me because normally <laughs> this kind of cutting means I'm at home indoors sewing. Sewing S E W sewing, not S O W sewing. So I think the other thing I'm going to be have to have to be mindful of. Of course, the wind wants to pick up when I'm doing this. Oh, I'm making a pig's ear. Yeah, I have to be mindful of keeping an eye on them 
for when the seedlings emerge. Should I do it that way or the way? Is that going to be enough? So what I was trying to get at is I want it to go all, all the way underneath so that then when it sat there in the cold frame like that the mice can't get sort of up and under. Actually they all need a little drop of water too. So, oh my goodness, fingers crossed, eh? And what I can say is thank God goodness I saved quite so much seed just shows doesn't it I think with seed saving always always save more seed than the, than you think you're going to need because if you do get to this stage of sowing and, and things germinating well and you've got enough you've either got some spare for next year or some spare to give away better to have too much saved seed than not enough Right, I'll do the rest of these, give them the same treatment, get them into the cold frame and then move on to the garlic bed. Well, don't they look peculiar all wrapped up? <laughs> it's like the bridal cold frame. I'm a bit disappointed that it's not quite such a shocking pink once it's in a cold layer. Oh dear, it's getting a bit gusty again. Um, I hope you're going to be able to hear. Let's carry on anyway. And a sound of a train. So here I am in the garlic bed and with the purple sprouting broccoli, oh, which is raring to go. Now, with the garlic, I always give the garlic a bit of a top dressing, a feed, around about now, mid-February because by now it's been in the ground for four months, a little bit longer. It's been working really hard. Obviously over winter, the growth is slower than it would, well, than it's gonna be now, from now on as we start to get warmer. But the bed that it went into, although I gave it a bit of a feed before I planted the garlic, it's not really had much, so by now it's going to be a bit depleted so I give it a top dressing. I use this stuff this six times. This is dried pelleted chicken manure so it comes dry it's easy to store because of that but what it does need to work is to be wet because then it sort of dissolves the pellets and, and parts can take up the nutrients. Now in the past, I've literally just come along, scattered it, because in the past, over the winter, I keep the garlic under the, sort of the neck tunnels, just to, a bit of protection over the winter, uh, stop the sort of the cats getting in there, stop birds pulling them up, what have you. This year though, I've got this Koya coconut stuff on. So I'm now thinking, hmm, am I just gonna put it on top of the coconut? Do I need to scrape the coconut off and get the pellets onto the soil? Well, that would be bonkers. So I'm literally, I'm just going to, I'm just going to chuck it on the top. Um, this is just an old compost bag, but generally when I'm using the pellets, because the bags are big and heavy. <laughs> that one's coming to the end. I've got a whole nother new one. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier. So. As with any of these things, just, just follow the instructions in terms of amount to put on. Now, like I say, I've never, I've never fed like this over the top of a mulch. So, opla, I've no idea how it's going to work, if it's going to work. I'm, I'm sort of guessing though that as we get more rain, <laughs> which we're going to have, we're, we're definitely not finished with the rain yet. But as that rain comes, 
it's going to dissolve the pellets and, and that goodness can then get into the soil where the garlic can take it up. Here's hoping. Now, also, I'm going to do the same for the purple sprouting broccoli. I'm going to get under there and give it a top dressing with the pellets because their, their lifetime, they're, they're one of the longest lived plants in the garden of all the annuals, as in the, the plants we grow fresh each year, as opposed to the perennials like the Taunton Dean Kale, which is a plant it once, leave it, harvest. So these were actually sown back in April 2019. So they were sown 10 months ago. I will start harvesting probably in about another month's time. So from about mid-March, possibly the end of March. I could, in theory, be harvesting right through till May, by which stage the plant will be over a year old. So they definitely need a little bit of help because all this beautiful growth that they put on in the, sort of the late summer, early autumn, they slowed down a bit again like the garlic for the winter, they're going to start going mental again. Again it was a bed that I manured before I put them in, but even so, let's give them a helping hand with a bit of chicken poo. Got to get under there though. <laughs> Once again, I'm beaten by the weather. It's getting really blowy out there again now, so there's just no point in me filming anything else today. It would frustrate me, it's going to frustrate you, so I was going to carry on and make the next video. I'm going to postpone that for now and just get on with some other little jobs because, pardon me, it's a beautiful day out there. It's gorgeous, it's mild, it's bright, it's so bright, it's wonderful. And actually, I love this wind. Uh, obviously, I don't like it too strong. <laughs> it's only about 20, 25 miles an hour today in, in the little gusts, as opposed to the 65 miles an hour it was at the weekend, which is a little over 100 kilometres, isn't it? But yeah, I, I really love these sort of bright, windy days in the garden just before spring. Gorgeous. So I'm going to stay, do a few little jobs. I might just do a bit of sitting, actually, because it's I can, I can feel the good that it's doing me just being out in this brightness. I don't know what the next video will be that you will see. I was planning to do some pruning. I don't know when that will come to you, but I'm going to do some pruning of the rose bush and in the herb bed. And oh, I'm so excited. I will bring you this next time. I have a brand new pair of Felcos. This time they're genuine, genuine ones. I'll catch you up on that next time. So for today, it's cheerio from me and... <laughs> the cats I don't know where they've all scarpered suddenly so I will see you again really soon I hope but in the meantime make the most of days like today if you can if you get them whatever you're up to please look after yourselves go carefully it's really really wet and slippy underfoot so yes please go carefully see you soon